All right, let's take a look at the combo box. It's down, down, down here in input widgets. If you don't see it right away, you gotta just scroll down or you can just search in the filter. I'm gonna drag and drop it here. The combo box is, well, kind of like me without coffee in the morning. It doesn't do a whole lot without some real encouragement. So we're gonna show you how to work with this thing. Drag some other controls on and let's go get the label. And let's put these in some layouts here. Doing things slightly different just to show you how you can do it in multiple ways. All right, let's save and run. And like I said, it does very little, actually nothing without some encouragement. So really what the combo box does is when you click it, it'll drop down a list of options the user can choose from. I know you've probably seen this all over the place by now but we're gonna show you how I actually work with it. I'm gonna say select an item. This is where we're gonna have the selected item. And let's actually, you can either right click and edit items or you can just simply double click it. Brings up the combo box editor. And we're gonna manually add some items. Dog, let's try dog. Cat, bird, and lizard. All right, so let's say you put something in here you don't want, you can just simply remove it and you can also change the ordering on these things each item has properties so you can just select something go to properties and you can see the text and all the other properties some of these get a little advanced we're not going to really cover them because we're still in the beginner phase hit OK and you can see it's now populated save and run this is the expected behavior of the combo box you click it opens up the list of items you can choose an item this is a zero based index, so zero, one, two. What we're gonna do is allow the user to select an item, show them the item they selected. If they click save, we're gonna save it to disk. And then when they reopen the application, we're gonna load it right back to the item they selected. Let's go over to our dialog here. We're going to say queue settings. Queue settings allows us to save and load settings off to the disk very easily. Queue variant. Queue variant allows us to put different variable types into a variable. So you could put like a string or bowling or an integer and then easily get those back. We covered both queue variant and queue settings in the queue core series out on Udemy. And queue message box. Along with this, we're gonna have some other functions as well. We're gonna say void init. Void load. Let's jump into our interface here. Right click this, go to slot. And you can see there's different signals that are emitted from the combo box. We're gonna want current index changed. Doesn't really matter which one of these you do, but I'm just gonna do the current index changed int. And we are going to go to slot for the button clicked. Implement these functions. Now, the thing I love about programming is there's multiple ways to solve the same problem. What a lot of programmers like to do is put all of their initialization and everything right in the constructor and it becomes kind of a mess to really figure out what's going on when something doesn't work the way you want it to. I tend to separate the logic out. That way it's very easy to follow, very easy to understand what's going on. So dialogue's gonna load, it's gonna set up our user interface. Then we're gonna initialize some data. Then we're gonna load the user's save data. 
So let's jump down to initialize. We're going to clear out any old data that we've already got in there. We're going to say for, let's just do a for loop here. Increment that I. And you notice there's add item and add items. Add items, plural, allows you to take an already filled out list and just shove it in one line of code, easy and done. We don't have that list, so we're going to add them in one at a time. And we're just simply going to say going to take that index and just turn it into a Q string and put it right out there. Once we're at that point, let's go ahead and test this out, see what it looks like. And sure enough, there's our zero based list and the user can select and choose items from that list. Now we're going to work with the combo box current index change. So when the user selects something, we want to actually do something with that information. So we're going to say UI combo box. Actually, we're going to say UI LBL selected set text. UI combo box. And we want to get the current. And you can see there's current data, current text, and current index. Well, Current text is the same thing as if you were to do the current index change with the Q string. Current index is the same thing as literally this right here. Ta da! So we're going to go with current text. Now, just to show that we can grab both of those, Now when the user selects something, we're going to show not just the index, but also the text. Very quickly, very easily say, hey, for item number four. And we could clean this up a little bit just by simply putting an equal sign in there. So it's a little more representative of what's going on. Zero is item number zero. Four is item number four. Let's go ahead and write the code that's going to save this stuff. So when the user clicks that save button, we're going to say Q settings. Again, we've covered Q settings and Q variant in the Q core tutorials out on Udemy. I strongly, strongly, strongly advise you go watch those. If you don't, if you haven't, if you have no interest in it, you can just simply select Q settings, hit F1, and it takes you right to the help file. So settings, we are going to set value. We need to give it a Q string key. And now let's give it a value. The value we're going to give it is the UI combo box current index. So we want to get the index of the currently selected item. If there is an item in the combo box in that list at all, even if you just have one item, there will always be a current index. Now, let's say Q message box information. We just want to give the user some guidance here. We're going to say select and say, please close and reopen the application. That way the user knows, hey, something happened. We need to do something else. Otherwise, they'll just click that button over and over again and go, nothing's happening. All right, so now we have our load function here. This one's a little bit tricky, and I'm going to explain why. I'm going to say Q settings, settings, and I'm going to say value. And you notice how we've got that key, but then we can get a default value. So I want to make sure that key lines up and want to make sure we have a default value. And this is what I want to really go into. 
this is a key value pair. And if the key's off, so if we have set or setting, it's two different things. You want to make sure that this really lines up with this. And what we're going to do is grab this guy. Key variant value. And we're going to get that value. Notice how we have a default, default zero, because this is a zero based list inside the combo box. That means the default is going to be the first item in the list. This is another little gotcha here. If we say something like value lesson UI combo box count, well, what are we doing here? Let me get some screen real estate for us. What are we really doing here? We're saying if the value is less than the count. So we're trusting that this value is automatically an integer. This will actually work on some operating systems and not work on others. This ran flawlessly on my Mac, did not work on my Linux box. So you would have to say 2 int, but notice how there's this bull null pointer. So what we really should do before we even attempt something like that is convert that variant into the value type that we want. We'll say int index equal value dot to int. We're going to use a Boolean. We're going to pass that over. And then we're going to say if not OK, meaning something bad happened. We want to let the user know, and then we want to get out of here. If you see something like this, where you're trying to load that in and it's just not working, chances are the user's been playing with it. And what do I mean by playing with it? When you use Q settings, this guy, ta-da, it's going to save it out either into the registry on Windows or into an INI file on any other operating system. And it's a plain text file the user can easily crack open and start modifying. Um, not really wanted in some applications, but by default, that's just the de facto way that things are done. So we're just going to say, hey, if we could not convert this, then let the user know something bad happened, and then return out. Now, we have another case here where the user could have gone in there and put in some abstract number like that, or even 81. We've only got 10 items in that list, so this would actually fire off. So we want to make sure that, hey, um, we want this to be less than the count. We want to make sure this works, and if not, then yeah, we want to do something about that. We're going to set current index to zero by default, just in case something goes awry. Otherwise, little bit of sanity checking. This is probably vast overkill 90% of the time, but I just want it in there just in case. Last rudimentary check of our code. We're going to start. We're going to set up our UI. We're going to initialize. We're going to load. When we go into load, if there's been nothing saved, we're going to default to zero. Sure enough, loaded. Let's select like item four. Click Save. Selection Save. Please close and re reopen the application. Go ahead and close that. Now, when we rerun this, it's going to load, but it's going to have a 4 in here. And then it'll do all this code. Save and run. Item 4. So let's select a different number here. Let's say 2. Rerun it. There we go. Simple to use. Easy to understand once you wrap your head around the basic fundamentals of the combo box. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger project out of Udemy called Cute Widgets for Beginners with C++. This is a large course with 73 lectures and 17 hours of video footage. 
This course covers everything from what is a widget all the way down to complete example applications using the skills you've learned in this course. Sorry, there's no QML in this course. This is strictly cute widgets. I will make a QML course later on, but this just focuses on widgets from a beginner's perspective. Even though this is a beginner's course, you do need to have some fundamental information available. You need to know C++ and the Qt Core Libs. I do have some courses available out on Udemy, Qt Core Beginners, Intermediate Advanced. It's not necessary you take these courses, but it is highly recommended. And as always, I'm available out on the Voidrooms Facebook group, along with 3,000 other programmers. See you there.